Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and um, I'm now answering question number three from the Mechanics M1 International A Level and Excel January 2022 exam. This question is um, about a beam ADCB, which has a length of five meters. The beam lies on a horizontal step with the end A on the step and the end B projecting over the edge of the step. The edge of the step is at the point D, where D to B is 1.3 meters, as shown in figure 2. When a small boy of mass 30 kilograms stands on the beam at C, where CB is 0 0.5 meters, the beam is on the point of tilting. Okay, The boy is modeled as a particle, and the beam is modeled as a uniform rod. Okay, Find the mass of the beam. All right. So now, um, first of all, we have a uniform rod, okay, and its length is five meters. So its weight is going to act exactly halfway along its length. When it's a uniform ro rod, the weight is going to act exactly in its geometric center. So exactly 2.5 meters from the end. If it's a five meters rod, that will be where the the weight, which is, and it's a it's a the mass of the rod is what we have to find the mass of the beam. So this is mg newtons. Okay, and then it says that there is a boy standing at C. Okay, so there's a boy standing at C, which is over here, which is 0.5 meters in from from B. That boy has a mass of 30 kilograms. So the weight of the boy is 30 g newtons that's the weight of the boy okay the other forces that are acting here it basically is this is on the point of tilting okay so there's a reaction force going to be here at the so at the at the edge okay uh, this is the reaction force at the edge of um you know this um kind of where the beam is 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 pivoted you could say All right if it's going to tilt Okay, it's like, it's it's this 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 is basically this is this is about to lift off the floor. Okay, this is about to lift off the floor. It's on the point of tilting. Okay, so there's just a reaction force over here at the point where it's pivoting. All right, there's that. That's how we can understand that. These are the three forces acting on this beam. So we need to find the mass of the beam. So what we can do is we can take moments here. We can take moments, and taking moments about D would be the sensible thing to do because we don't know the value of the reaction force, neither can we find it because we don't know what this weight is. Okay, I know the reaction force is equal to mg plus 30g, but because we don't know what mg is, we don't know what m means, that's what we have to find, we um, should take moments about D. That way we can eliminate D from the moment equation as the force acts through D. So the moment of the force R about d is going to be zero so we need to think about what these distances are here all right so we've got to think about this distance here okay and this distance here for us to be able to find the moments of the forces we've got to find the distances of the forces from the place we're taking moments about so i know that this whole length here is from there to there is five okay and we know that this length is 2.5 here so from here to the end is 2.5 from there to the end is 2.5 okay so we i know from from the point where there's force x to the end is 2.5 so this distance here must be 2.5 minus 1.3 so this distance here is 2.5 2.5 minus 1.3 so this is going to be 1.2 meters from mg to the point r and here we need the distance of where the boy standing on c to d that distance is going to be 1.3 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.8 meters. That's that distance there. Okay, with those, we can now take moments about D. So the clockwise moments, which is 30 G times the distance 0 0.8, is equal to the anti-clockwise moments. So I'm going to have uh, 1.2 times Mg. So Mg times 1.2. And what we need to find is M here. Now the G's will cancel out. You can divide both sides by G. So I'm left with 30 times 0 0.8 over 1.2 is equal to the mass 
and we need to calculate that. So 30 times 0 0.8. divided by 1.2 which is 20 so that's 20 kilograms okay that's the answer to part a simple as that okay now for part b it says a block of mass x kilograms is now placed at the beam at a okay so there's now a block of 8 kilograms placed at a so of x kilograms we don't know what it is. X, so that's X G Newtons acting at A. Um, the block is modeled as a particle. Find the smallest value of X that will enable the boy to stand at the B, on the beam at B. So now the boy is standing at B. So the boy has a mass of 30 kilograms. So that's 30 G Newtons now acting at B. Okay, without the beam tilting. Okay, so we still have our reaction force here at D. We still have the reaction force here at D. That's where the reaction is going to be. Okay. Because that's right at the edge there. So we want to find the smallest value of X that will enable the boy to stand on the beam without tilting. So again, it's on the point of tilting. So it's like there's, it's about to lift off. Okay, it's at the point of tilting, it's about to lift off, so there's no reaction in this area at all because it's about to lift off the floor. Okay, so the only reaction force is on the pivot here. Okay, so um, again, what we can do is we can take moments about D again. That will probably be the, sens the sensible thing to do because, again, we can't find what R is. We also have, of course, the weight again. Okay, almost forgot that one. The weight of the beam, we now know it's 20 kilograms, so that's 20 G Newton. So we know that the, the mass of the beam was 20 kilograms, so the weight is 20 G Newtons, which is acting exactly halfway because it's still the same uniform block. So now we have these this extra force here, X um, kilograms, so that's X G Newtons here, 20 G Newtons in the middle, and 30 G Newtons at the other end. So we need to now find these lengths. Okay. Um, up to D, that length, and I need that length, and I need this length, which we already have. Okay, so I need to find these other lengths now. Now, the length from where X, the mass, the block is acting, up to the point D where we're going to take moments about, is going to be 5 minus 1.3. Now, 5 minus 1.3 is going to be 3.7. Is that 3.7 meters? Okay, that gives you 5 altogether. And here this is 2.5 minus 1.3, which again is 1.2 meters. Okay, so I have all the distances, and, I, and I'm going to take moments about D again. So the clockwise moments will be 30G multiplied by um, 1.3. That's the clockwise moments. And they are balanced by the anti-clockwise moments, which are XG times 3.7. Plus 20g times 1.2. Okay, so here we have uh, equation. The only thing we don't know is x. We can cancel the g's because there's in every term. Divide both sides by g. So we have 30 times 1.3. 30 multiplied by 1.3. That gives us 39. Equals, and you've got 3.7 times x plus 20 times 1.2, that's going to give us 20, um, 20 times 1.2, that's 24. Okay, so now we're going to do 39 minus 24 divided by 3.7, and that will give you the value of x. So 39, let me do it like this, 39 minus 24, divided by 3.7 which gives us 150 over 37 so 150 over 37 um, kilograms which we should round to 3SF or 2SF so 4.04 4 4.05 is the value of X okay it's, it's X kilograms so the value of X is 0 4.05 or we could say, we could even call it um, 
three SF, two SF, because we have um, used G. So you can wind it to two SF. You can wind it to three SF. You can even leave it like this, I guess, and that will still be acceptable. Okay, that's part B done. Okay, now for part C. So state how you have used the modeling assumption that the block is a particle in your calculations. Well, basically, a particle is an object which is um, considered as so small that we could say that we took, if we took x, the block x, as a particle, then uh, we have um, assumed that its mass is concentrated at one point. Okay, so we can say that we assume that we assumed that the mass of the block is concentrated at one point therefore the act the weight the weight acts through a single point on the block through a single point okay through a single point something like that that's fine for your answer. So we, we assume that the mass of the block is concentrated at one point. So therefore the weight acts through that single point as we've shown there. Okay, so the block is over here. It's a block, but we've taken the weight to act through one point in the block. That's how we can understand that modeling assumption. Okay, this is quite a common question that they ask you in these type of questions. So you have to understand what a particle is and how, what assumptions we make when we're using a particle. And this is the this is how we use that in this particular context. Okay, so there's the answer to question um, three, part C, and that concludes this question. Any other questions from this paper um, that you want to watch should be in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions which are related to this topic, which is moments, um, can be found in this playlist over here, and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.